today I'm going to try and explain tone in painting and how water content in watercolour will help you achieve tone. So I've been out, I've drawn a lovely sketch of a house, uh, I've got some lovely tones going on, a nice dark tree, dark bush at the side and a nice dark chimney contrasted against some light of the sky. And I get home and I think, how do I get that picture onto my my drawings? So I've drawn up two pictures here, the same scene. The top painting I'm going to do as a tonal sketch, just using one colour to try and explain uh, the difference uh, between using colour and showing you how the content of water in watercolour will help you achieve those tones. So there we go, that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to start by mixing up some washes. This is ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue. Just adding uh, some pigment to the water. This is going to be our first wash for our coloured picture. And as you can see, I'm trying to mix a consistency where I can still see the white of the palette shining through the colour. We do that now with burnt umber same technique adding a little bit of red this is so it stops it going green when I add blue to it later for the colored picture as you can see I can still see that white of the palette through the color so that's good enough lastly quinacridone gold again the same process adding color to the palette with a little bit of Windsor yellow and I can still see the white of the palette through the color and that's that's enough for the first stage for the mono painting I'm going to add burnt umber and some raw sienna don't really use this color much but it works quite nicely the two together and again just trying to mix up a quantity of paint where I can still see the white of the palette through the the color in the palette uh, and once once we've got this correct there we go it's a bit more water there we go nice sort of fluidy color there so let's start with the mono painting just testing the paint and then bringing down this cloud formation which will sort of go through the painting adding more color tone rather around the edge of the house not masking anything off here and not really particularly worrying about painting over the lines bringing the colour down from the, the top left through to the bottom right. Nice sweep of brush, dry brush there for the grass that will be at the front of the house and probably won't touch that mark again in the whole of the painting. Adding some water now just to take away those rough edges of uh, the first layer of tone, bringing some of it into the roof where I've over overstepped the mark with the, uh, the line. Now we're going to paint the house in. The house is a slightly uh, darker tone, but it will be okay to use this colour. This is just going on, just filling in the shape now. It's paint by numbers now, watercolour paint by numbers. <laughs> Burnt umber into the house there. Very light mix, as you can see. Very little colour, uh, pigment in the paint, just sort of mainly water. Uh, and just, just some water there just to dampen in that, that colour that's leaked into the roof. Um, so I just dried the brush there after putting it in water. I so I do that quite a bit. Um, so now we're going to add some more paint to the bushes at the side of the house. It's a quick stroke there. And we'll add some more paint to these, make them a lot darker as we progress through the painting. So there we have the basic uh, first initial wash on our monotone painting at the top. Now we have to try and translate that into colour for the painting at the bottom of the screen. So taking some French ultramarine blue, just adding some more paint to that as I put my brush in water to sort of strengthen it up. 
just a bit of a splodge of paint there and a little bit of uh, burnt umber into the mix just to take some of the edge off that colour. Again, pulling the colour around the side of the house but not being too <laughs> careful about it. Um, sometimes using a damp brush just to mop that colour out and away from the house. So I had to put some over the roof on this painting just to darken it a little bit. I thought it might be a bit too white otherwise. And adding some more colour down the right hand side of the house. And then blending that in with some water just to give the dark from the top left through to the lighter blue at the side of the right of the house. Moving to the burnt umber now to fill in the, the house as we did before. So same sort of strength of watercolour, different colour, but same strength. That's the important, that's the tonal bit. So this is the same tone as the sky in the house, and we're just adding that to the walls of, of our house that we're painting. Being a little bit more careful this time, and using a flat brush, uh, which makes these paintings um, so much quicker. It's painting down to the bushes there. Drying off the brush. Make a green now. And this green will be used for the bushes at the side as before. Again, it's the same tone, just different colour. And putting the bushes in on both sides. And again, we darken the tone of these bushes as we work our way through the painting. Quick bit of grass in the foreground now, just a quick swipe with the brush. Uh, both on the, uh, the little bit in the bushes as well, uh, just to take some of the white paper away and that bush there, and the little bush on the right hand side of the painting. And there you can see two paintings there, the top tonal painting and the bottom coloured painting, all using the same tone of paint with the same amount of water in all the mixes. Now let it dry. So both paintings have dried now and we're going to go with our second tone. So the first thing to do is to strengthen up the paint, add more pigment to the paint, make it slightly darker so when you move it around the palette you don't see so much of the white of the palette. We're going to do that to all the colours, some French ultramarine going into the blue at the bottom, thickening up the paint, more pigment than water. Try not to pick up too much water from the palette and I'll clean my brush before I put it into the paint. Do more quinacridone gold for a thicker colour there. And then finally the burnt umber, straight into the burnt umber, just to thicken it up, make it a dark tone. So using these dark tones now, we're going to take some burnt umber and uh, raw sienna into our top painting. And we're going to start adding the shadows in. So the sun is coming from the right hand side and that's where the shadows will be cast under the eaves of the building. And it'll bring down the side of that elevation. There's a sort of a shadow from the bit of house that protrudes uh, into the front garden. To the wrong colour, into the right colour. It's very easy to do when you're doing two paintings. Uh, just doing underneath the window sills, and again on the right hand side of the painting just doing the under the eaves, making that darker in tone than the previous wash. And that's easier now because we've put more paint, uh, more pigment into the paint. Uh, dark under the porch, a little flick of colour on the uh, porch roof. Same tone into the chimney, all over the chimney. We can darken up the front later. And into the bush again, just gently pulling that colour. Now we've got a nice dark against light, the dark bush against the light building. And we do the same over this side with the tree again. Still got a light tree. Um, we're going to go into the bush, add a bit more tone into the, the bush, which funny enough I did in the colour painting, but I didn't in the tone when I tonal sketch when I first went through this. Moving through to the front bushes, just at the base of the bushes, not all over, just at the base of the bushes and then some sort of straight strokey lines uh, to suggest the bottom of the bushes. And really at this point now, all I'm doing is just popping myself back round with the brush, making things darker in those, those shadow areas on the tonal sketch. 
So we're just going to do the colour picture now. Uh, so again, we start with uh, the burnt umber, added a bit of canacridone gold there, and we're just going to work into the shadow areas of the picture, down the side elevation of the house to get the cast shadow from the bit that protrudes, the window sills, a little bit of shadow under that uh, eave of that pointy window, pointy roof rather. Uh, as you can see, I'm going over the windows. Uh, part of the window is, is dark and part of the window is light, but that's okay. Window sills are putting in, touched to the roof of the porch. Being careful under the porch to make sure that I don't work into the bush, so I've got a light against dark with the bush. And the chimney again, just finishing off the chimney. All over with that colour. Again, just going back over some of these shadowy areas just to make them just a little bit darker with tone with pigment. Sometimes the watercolour runs too quickly down the page. So now we've got a sort of a greeny tone of blue there. And we're just going to go back into the bushes at the side of the house, strengthening them up like we did in the tonal sketch above. Nice dark against light, light against dark with the bushes against the tree and against the side of the house. And down to the bushes that are at the front of the house. Let's make a sort of a, a grassier green now, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to go into the bushes, the base of that bush that's growing out the front of the side of the house, just into the base of that, changing the green before we go into the bushes as well. It's always good to change your colours as you go. Just a little bit more at the dot and the base of that bush, and then into the front bushes that are in front of the house, taking that colour to the top of the bush that's at the foreground of the house but not going over the line and then painting the dark bits again along the base of those bushes. Um, so we still got the light color along the top. Gently putting some water just to blend the top out a little bit so we don't get any hard lines. Checking the tones on the rest of the painting. I think we can let that dry now before we start on the next stage of the painting. So this is where we get into really deep colour now. So I'm adding lots of pigment from the sienna and the raw umber to make a really dark mix of colour. Adding some more blue into the green, this takes it back to blue. Not, not one to clean my palette during <laughs> between each wash. Uh, all, all adds to the harmony of the painting. More burnt umber into the burnt umber. And guess what? More quinacridone gold into the quinacridone gold. So we've got some really thick paint now. You can hardly see the colour of the white palette through it. Just a thick colour of pigment and paint. And let's start again at the top with the tonal sketch. Going back onto the eaves of that portrait to enhance those tones, make the contrast between light and dark, with bits going back and bits coming forward. Put more colour down the side of the house where the shadow is being cast from the protruding part of the building. Again, not worrying about going over the windows, but just basically building up some tone onto those already dark parts into the chimney, nice big swipe with the brush. That's what I like about a flat brush. You can do that quite easily. <laughs> Back into the bushes now, this time I'm going to put a little bit of paint and then mop it out with some water just to let the paint move on its own really, just to add another dimension to your painting. So just adding some colour there, some pigment, and letting it spread on its own through that wet wash. We'll do the same to the other side. Add some water and add some paint just to let it sort of mingle and merge. Gives a bit of depth to the painting. 
add a little bit of detail to the front bushes where the, dark, the darks will be, where the stalks of the branches of the bushes are growing up, some little straight lines, darkening the tone of the bushes against the house uh, so that we can see the tops of the bushes in the foreground, the same on the left hand side of the painting. And as you can see we're starting to put up some really nice tonal areas into the painting now, uh, doing the bottom again of the bush that grows across the front of the house. And we're going to do the same to the colour painting, exactly what we did on the tonal sketch. Doing the side elevation of the house, just bringing in that shadow. I'm putting a bit of shape into it this time where the uh, porch is actually overhanging the side of the house. So there's a little triangle shape there on the, on the side of the building. Adding a bit of quinacridone gold to the mix now, just to make a change from the dark colour that's going across the page. And just going back into the porch, darkening up. So we've got dark against light for the bush, down the side of the pointy bit of the house, whatever that's called, <laughs> and under the eaves, <laughs> uh, under the eaves and across the chimney. Nice stroke with a big wide brush. I love a flat brush me. Uh, again, just deepening again those tones at the side, making that, that bush really dark by adding a little bit of colour and some water and letting them, the colour mingle its way across the page, adding a bit of depth to the painting. Stroke of colour, a little bit of water, and then add a little bit more pigment onto the painting. Drying the brush between each thing, so I'm only picking up the paint that's in the palette, not uh, adding water to it. Adding quinacridone gold to the French ultramarine to give a nice warm greeny colour which we're then going to put at the base of the hedge at the front of the house, very much like we did with the tonal sketch. Adding more depth of colour to the bush that comes between the house and the, the sort of grassy front on the, both the left and the right hand side of the painting. And then working into the foreground bushes where all the sort of shrubbery and twigs and things would be happening, some little side strokes there for bits growing up, there's always little dark bits at the bottom of hedges. And we started to build up some nice light against dark, dark against light sections now, very much like uh, watercolour should be, so watercolour should be, this is watercolour. And I forgot to do the windowsill. <laughs> It's funny when you step back from a painting and you think you've done it all and you just notice one little thing. So there's a bit of a windowsill going back in there, drying off the brush. And that's that for that stage. Let it dry. So now it's all dry. We're going to go in with probably the thickest mix of colour we can do now. This is all burnt umber. It's very thick in the palette. You can hardly see the white of the palette through the pigment in the, in the colour. I'm going to need the same sort of dark, but I'm going to use a blue in the colour painting. I'm using a sort of a more detailing brush now, number six. And we're going into that brown mixture, which is really dark, adding more pigment to it now. And we're going to start by painting in the tree, which, as you remember from my sketch, was very dark, probably the darkest thing on the painting. So just painting in that dark tree now and this is probably the only part of the painting I can't do with a flat brush which is why I brought this this number six into the mix working through into the windows now I did some darks for the windows the white windows always have kind of a darker interior to them more paint onto the brush Quick strokes down for the windows, not trying to paint, paint windows, just a sort of a suggestion of a line. That nice dark window under the porch adding to the tonal contrast to the bush. And doing that with the windows in the bottom story of the house as well. Bringing out the bush uh, by painting in the windows. Separating it from the rest of the painting. More dark into the upstairs windows. Again, just little downward strokes, not trying to be accurate with this. 
with a doorstep in, nice dark doorstep, just to bring your eye back into the painting and let it somewhere to rest on. Finally, the chimney, just darken up one side of the chimney. Now into the colour painting and we're just deepening up that French ultramarine blue. We're going to put the windows in first this time. Again, just simple strokes, not trying to paint a window, just some random strokes. Doesn't matter if the windows look different or if they've got little gold holes or gaps in that could be curtains. In the downstairs window, the door, that nice dark shape that brings out the bush under the porch. To the windows, bringing again, bringing out that bush by making a dark behind the light. Now the tree, and we're going to make, make a really dark colour here, some red, some brown, some French ultramarine, that colour is really dark. So they're making a really dark mix there. Can't see the white of the palette. And into the tree. It's darker than the bush at the side. And just painting in the detail of those twigs, and flicking the brush across the <laughs> across the room in anger. <laughs> Adding more dark there. So now we have a really nice dark tree in the front garden, adding some more dark to the freestanding tree, dark to the chimney. Still going back into the tree, making that nice and dark. Some little bits here and there now, just back into the tree trunk, some bits into the bushes, bushes at the top of the painting as well, if I needed something there. And that's pretty much it really. There's your nice tonal painting, a tonal sketch at the top that matches the tonal painting at the bottom. And all we really did to achieve this was to use thicker and thicker paint over the lighter tones from the start. Trying to make the tonal sketch match the colour sketch now, adding in some darks for some for the tree. And then the one thing that uh, I managed to forget in the colour painting, and this is another reason for stepping back and looking at your work. I forgot to put the, the dark step, doorstep um, under the front door. So just some dark colour here, just a quick mark. There we go, doorstep's in, the painting is finished. All those lovely, lovely tones. So there you go. There's my original sketch. Uh, with the sky coming in, going around the back of the house. The house itself is dark and light with the, the shadows of the house. We managed to translate that into a single colour sketch, which is basically, this is what you would do when you're out sketching. So that's that. And then we've translated that into colour down below, just by adding slightly different amounts of water to our mixes and using colour and tone so we get lovely areas where there's a dark against a light. So dark against the light there, dark against light. The sky comes behind the house, another dark against light area. It's mingled into the roof there too much, but I don't mind. That's okay. It's sort of, you're not looking at the roof anyway. You're looking at this door. We've put some heavy dark marks in to bring your eye into, into the sort of centre of the picture. Yeah, that's how I would, uh, that was how I would translate my sketch into a tonal and then a colour painting. And that's something I think that uh, it's taken me a while to learn, but I think it's worth doing if you get the time. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and even better, subscribe to the channel. I'll be helping you with more tips in the future. Thanks for viewing.